Good morning, dear friends. Today we celebrate the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church. And in this Mass, we ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us and to pray for us. I pray in this Mass for you and for your families. Pray and ask that God may bless and watch over you. We pray for, for peace and calm in our country here that all those who are justifiably upset, angry, and enraged may recognize that we all owe ourselves to act responsibly for the good of everyone, that we not allow our anger to destroy everything we treasure and hold dear. We pray for our leaders that we may recognize the many years of injustice in this country, that we may work honestly together to fix what is broken, to fix what is hurting, and to fix the darkness that has existed for these 400 years plus. Also pray for all those who have lost their businesses at this time, those whose property have been destroyed, those who have been unjustly affected by this destruction. We pray that God may give them the grace to stay calm, that God may touch the minds and hearts of leaders of our nation to think about how to help them rebuild again. And I pray for those who did not make it from this virus and at this time pray for Enrique Yamoka who passed away yesterday. Pray also for Margaret who passed away yesterday. Pray and ask that God, Margaret passed away from something, something else. But we pray and ask that God may grant them rest and peace. I pray for Eva Zachary who is recovering from a very, very difficult accident. We pray too for Cordis who has asked our prayers that God may help them as they recover from their surgeries. My dear friends, let us go to God and ask for his grace through our Blessed Mother. Our opening hymn today will be Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. Renown in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, today is supposed to be a memorial of St. Justin, the martyr. But because yesterday was Sunday, our Blessed Mother's Feast is moved to today. And so we pray that our love may be with us on this visitation of our Blessed Mother, that her love may be with us, and that her visit may bring us comfort. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. 
Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, while the Blessed Virgin Mary was carrying your son in her womb, inspired her to visit Elizabeth, grant us, we pray, that, faithful to the promptings of the Spirit, we may magnify your greatness with the Virgin Mary at all times. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Genesis. After Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to him and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? Have you, you have eaten then from the tree of which I have forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put with me, she gave me fruits from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and death shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. You will strike her head, while she will strike, he will strike at your head, while you will strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve, because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. His foundation upon the holy mountains, the Lord loves. The gates of Zion more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. And of Zion they shall say, One and all were born in her. And he who has established her is the most high God. Glorious things are told of you, of you O city of God. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled. This man was born here. And all shall sing in this festive dance. My home is within you. Glorious things are told of you, O city of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. O happy virgin, your birth, you gave birth to, this, to the Lord. O blessed mother of the church, you warm our hearts with the spirit of your son Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus, where his mother and his mother's sister, 
Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a spinch of hyssop and put it on his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And by his head, he handed over the spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken, and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the second, and, the, and of the other who was crucified with Jesus. And when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Then one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately flowed blood and water. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will reflect with you from, from the first reading and the gospel reading. As we hear from the gospel reading is the account of the fall, the fall of our first parents, Adam and Eve. And you realize how um, no one seemed to be responsible here. In this, in, this, in this encounter between Adam and God, Eve and God, no one seemed to be responsible. Everyone seemed to be blaming someone else. But, but before I even go into the lack of responsibility and accountability, I, I just want to talk about consequences of human action. I said this a few days ago, but as I, as I took this reading today, and as we celebrate this moment, it, it just struck me again, it even impressing itself in, in a very forceful way of the consequences of each action you and I take, the consequences of the choices we make. We may not be able to understand the entire spectrum of each choice, each important choice or decision or action that you take every day. We may not even be able to see the ripple effects of all of those actions because like a mirage, sometimes they disappear from our ability to see and to perceive or understand. As I watch or as I read this text, I hear how the decision by Eve to listen to someone else who did not have her best interest. Now, God had their back. God had their interest. God cared about them. But as always, we as human beings, are susceptible to listening to voices that don't really care about us, that deceive us and pretend as though they care and lead us astray and derail God's plan in our lives. Now, this just didn't happen with Adam. It's happening today. It happens every day in your life and in my life. And that's why when Yesterday we celebrated Pentecost. God gave us a spirit to be our teacher, to be our counselor, to provide us guidance because we are so susceptible 
to being deceived, to being misled, to being misdirected and misinformed, and very often to be led astray. And so when the devil came here, he acted and pretended as though he had the interest of Adam and Eve and told Eve, if only you would eat this, listen, you're going to be great, you're going to be what God does not want you to be. Now, how many times have we listened to things only to realize they were not meant for our good? They just made our lives worse. It happened with Adam. It happened with Eve. It's happening every day in our lives. Just imagine that the action of Eve spelled doom based on biblical theology. The action of one woman spelled doom for all of humanity if we take the fall of man into consideration. The action of one person spelled doom for all of humanity. That's how consequential her actions were, or her action was. Now, the same thing happened with Adam and Eve, right? Both of them did the same thing. They disobeyed, and there were consequences for you and for me, and for posterity and for generations yet unborn, forever, as long as the human race exists. And, and that brings me to where our country is at this time. I, I think about how one person who had the freedom could have chosen to do something differently, to not have put his knee on a man's neck until he was dead. One person, maybe not him, maybe someone else among those other officers who were watching him. They had chosen to do one thing right by telling him, hey, stop. Maybe just that one little intervention would have saved this union from this, 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 this moment of real darkness that we're living through right now. If just one person's action to do the right thing was listened to, I'm sure in his conscience, his conscience told him, what you're doing is not okay. He just did not listen. He was listening to some other voice tell him, this person deserves what you're doing. I'm sure not even he imagined that that one action was going to spell this hell or was going to unleash this hell that we're living through right now. I doubt it. That is the power of the actions we take. That is the power of the choices we make. That is the power of the decisions we choose. They do have consequences. You may never estimate. You may never um, predetermine the effect or those con the consequences of those actions. Because as the philosopher Hannah Arendt says, speak, as tells us, that human actions are unpredictable. So once you start, you know, the chain of your actions, you have no control of how it's all going to end. That's why you must think and think again before you do what you do. So that's the first thing I want us to think about, especially at this time, that one action of one person has cost us as a country, as a people, all of what we are seeing right now. No one would ever have imagined. Not his parents when they gave birth to him. No one. Nobody. Your actions have power. Your choices have power. Your decisions have power. For good or for evil. For peace or for hate. Or for, for love or for hate. For peace or for war. Your actions do have power. Please, listen to your heart at all times before you do what you do. Always ask yourself, who benefits from this? Who might be harmed from this? That's the first thing I want us to think about, but very quickly. 
We also want to thank God for the gift of Mary. The actions of Mary, one woman, when she made the choice, says, I am all yours, Lord. Whatever you want of me, let it be. The action of one person. I tell you, we, we, we have a contrast here between how one person's bad actions could have real consequences and how one person's good actions could have some great consequences too. Today we celebrate uh, Mary as a mother of the church. You realize how one yes to God, how one yes to God be be began the, the mystery of God's salvation, the mystery of your salvation and my salvation just because she said yes to God. So she contrasted for us what it feels like to do good. And she, she made us see the difference between saying yes to good and saying yes to evil. We see that between her and what Eve did. My hope every day is that you and I may choose to follow our blessed mother by saying yes to what's right, by saying yes to what's good, by saying yes to what benefits all of us, not what harm or hurts all of us. And secondly, unless we choose to become responsible, we will always have someone to pass the buck onto. We will always have someone to blame for our choices. Well, he was responsible. He made me do this. We, we see here how Adam passed the buck to Eve, Eve to the serpent. No one wanted to be responsible or accountable. And how often do we do that? I hope at this time, at this moment, after everything that we have lost as a country and as a people, that we would honestly take responsibility for how we have our actions or inactions have created this atmosphere that has allowed what we're going through right now to happen and be accountable and do the right thing and fix whatever is broken in our country. We hold the hope of the world, believe it or not. We hold the hopes of the world. What we do at this very historical moment will have consequences for the rest of the world. And I hope and I pray that we will do right, even at this very, very, very broken and sad moment. That's my prayer. And that's my hope. As always, I'd like to end by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. As the people of faith formed by the word of God and taught by the example of Mary, we unite our needs in the bond of prayer. That the church, like Mary, will rejoice to share Christ's victory over death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders, especially leaders here in our country, our president, our senators, our House of Representative members, our governors, our mayors, local leaders, religious bodies and organizations, that we might use our nation's resources for peace and not for war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who lift up the spirit of the poor, the oppressed, the homeless, the old, and those without hope may experience the saving power of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people will respect and honor human lives from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who celebrate this Eucharist will imitate Mary's examples of trust 
and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, at this very difficult time, that God may speak to our hearts to just stop and halt everything we are doing right now and make a reverse, reverse towards each other and recognize the humanity of each other, the interests of each other, and recognize our common dependence on each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Enrique and Margaret, that they will experience everlasting joy in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We say the Hail Mary by asking our Blessed Mother's intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty God, you have blessed us with the gifts of your beloved Son and his mother, the Holy Mary. Look with favor upon our prayers for your continued blessings. Grant that we, like Mary, proclaim your greatness in all that you accomplish for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. May our offering of this saving sacrifice be acceptable to your majesty, O Lord as you were pleased to accept the charity of the blessed of the most blessed mother of your only begotten son who lives and reigns forever and ever amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful song of praise. For truly, even to the ends of the earth, you have done great things and extended the abundant mercy from age to age when you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your son Jesus Christ, who forever is Lord. Through him, with the host of an through him the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of this peace. So from me, to you, and to your loved ones, May God's peace rest with you, abide and remain with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. At this time of spiritual communion, may God our Lord, may, may, Lord, may Jesus our Lord, Bring us his body and his blood 
and bring all this nourishment to our hearts, to our souls, to our minds, and to our lives. And may his presence touch our every facet of our being. May he change us to be like him. May he help us submit ourselves to the guidance and protection of our Blessed Mother. May we follow her example. Amen. Let us pray. May your church proclaim your greatness, O Lord, for you have done great things for your faithful. And as St. John, John the Baptist leapt with joy when he first sensed the hidden presence of Christ, so may your church rejoice to receive in this sacrament the same ever-living effect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass and to wish you a very happy and blessed day. I pray that the prayers of our Blessed Mother may be with you that her love may encircle and shield you, and that her peace may reign in your heart and in your soul. Amen. Today, I would like for us to say this prayer. It's a prayer, a serenity prayer, especially at this time where our hearts are in such tumult and our country is in such danger. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change. The courage to change the things we can and must. The wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time. Accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it or we would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if only we surrender to your will so that we may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friend, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have an amazing day. Never forget, you remain the delight of the Almighty God. We will sing.
the holy king and throne above. Hail, holy queen and throne above, O Maria. Hail, mother of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph for ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim heaven on earth we sound the hymn sorry 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 regina